it's always important to pay attention to the water no matter what. It doesn't matter if you're the one driving the boat or if you're that guy just sitting there relaxing, hanging out on the tube, because you never know what's going to happen. All of a sudden, you could just be fish slapped. Welcome back, guys. It is your boy, Broncos Guru, and it is this week's episode of Boneheaded Boaters of the Week. Figured we'd start off this week with a little fun at the dock. One of everybody's favorite places when you're boating is getting that boat off the dock. As you can tell, it takes a lot of skill and knowledge for you to be able to do this successfully and a little bit of precision, kind of like you see these people performing right here. These are definitely some masters around the dock. And when you're having a little fun around the dock, it's not always about getting that boat on and off the water. Here, maybe you just got your boat and you decide you're going to christen it. You give your wife a nice bottle of champagne and tell her to go ahead and go at it, honey. Let her keep beating that down until right here she starts to bend the rail. But you know what? That's not enough. It's not been enough, dear. Please go at it. And here we go, going to town. I can't tell if this is her ex-husband or husband's boat. Either way, they're probably not too happy how that went down. Here we see one of the more fun parts about being around the dock, and that's trying to get your boat back into your slip. As you can tell, this is another precision invent, and right here we've got a real pro. This is one of those kind of captains that's going to show you how to do this. I believe they're actually making an instructional video here on how to get a boat into a slip. The first part of this instructional video is make sure you have two friends with you at all times. You're going to need that little help just to help push this off the other boats and make sure that everything stays all right. The last thing you want to do is scuff our finish when we're trying to get the boat into the dock. Also, the next step of this is keep going forward and backward. Let's try and wind up in the same spots the whole time really don't want to do a whole lot of turning the wheel because bad things happen when we do that as well. And after about 30 minutes of going back and forth, when we finally do get close enough to our slip, let one of our friends just hang over the edge and hang onto the dock for dear life while we try and get the boat in there. And obviously, if you can't tell, I'm laying it on pretty thick. Please don't listen to a word I said when you're trying to dock your boat, guys, because it's going to help you about as much as it helped this captain. Also, we like to do some strange things in the dock sometimes. And a lot of times we'll see some things like this happen where a little redneck ingenuity comes out. We already know by watching this, things are not going to go well, probably. When we see something like this setting up on YouTube, it's always a bad sign right off the start. I do have to admit, though, they've made it further than I thought they were going to make it. I thought for sure somebody was going swimming right before they even got this three-wheel trike right off that boat. But here's where that old redneck ingenuity really steps up and shines, because I don't know what in the world they thought was going to go good by doing this. Of course, they've got to get this trike up off that dock and back up to the house. And, well, we know this is an even worse idea than trying to take it off the boat. But even though I don't think it's a good idea, my man's going to go ahead and give it that college effort and let's see if he can get it up the dock. He's actually doing pretty good, and you know what? He he might even make it. I can't believe this, that we're actually seeing my man do this. I thought for sure there was no way in the world my man was going to get this trike up these stairs. But you know what? Maybe he's going to prove me wrong. And no, he's not. Down for the count, he goes. Well, we all knew it was going to end at some point. Those good old sailor boys, they truly feel like they own the wind and the waves and the sea out there on the water. And they're going to prove it every single time. If you're out there even stealing their wind, they're coming after you and they're going to take it back. Kind of like this guy does right here. He saw this windsurfer out there and joined himself and said, no way, bro, you're not stealing my wind. And he took it back. He's these guys are also known like our powerboat brother and to get a little frisky down at the dock. They like to give some little love taps, we'll call it down there. This is a pretty slick little idea right here. Look at all the people on this vessel on the right. Going down the line, dropping fenders along the way to make sure this boat can't love tap their boat. That's one way of anchor blocking a boat. But what they don't realize was this was all a ploy and they're going to get a little stern action on the backside as they love tap this other vessel behind them. If they'd only thought to leave a few people back over there so they could have tried to protect that vessel as well. This really is a wild scene right here, guys. I understand when it gets windy, especially with keels in the water. It's a little bit tough, but this one's kind of crazy to watch. Another thing them sailor boys are real proud of is the fact that their boat doesn't really need any fuel to get around. That's right. They'll find all the most ingenious genius ways in the world to get that sailboat around the dock, down the river, however they can without burning any fuel, and they will certainly brag to you about how they're doing it. Also, if there is no wind, sometimes they can party and have a good time just like the rest of us. These guys right here will show you the kind of ingenious things you can do on a sailboat when you get out there and have a little ingenuity and a little bit of fun and a little bit of alcohol. But you know what? This turns into a bad time sometimes because what will wind up happening is you'll turn into a, hey, hold my beer and watch this moment. And the next thing you know, you're going to be talking to your buddy. I think I can clear that bridge. Let's go have a limbo contest with it and see who wins. But you know what? Nobody ever wins when you play a limbo contest with the bridge. Thanks for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed this week's episode of Boneheaded boaters of the week. If you ever see anything crazy happening on your waterways, be sure to hit me up on Facebook or Instagram and let me know and you might see your stories over here. Kind of like Andrea Priddle, Tony Jumper, Matt Cotico, Orlando Perez, Aaron Johnson, Cork Fishing for Live, and Keith PV House did this week. And if you haven't already, go ahead and drop an anchor on that subscribe button. If not, I'm coming to steal your drain plug.